you know, you really can't study the theory of personality without taking a deep dive into the question of what does it mean to be human? What is a human being? So what I want us to do in this little lecture is to talk about taking this deep dive into uh, the inside of us, really two worlds that we live in. We live in this exterior world. We, we're so far out into outer space. A and then we have a world inside of us. We spend most of our side of, of our lives looking outside of us. What I want us to think about now is looking inside of us, especially with the question, what does it mean to be human? And in reality, that's what psychology typically deals with in most of its forms and, and, and segments. The universe is about six trillion miles across. Now we know it's much bigger than that, but basically that's the part of it that we, we can see. So that's the outside. Again, that's where most of our attention is focused on the world outside of us. But this world inside of us is also, especially uh, important. Uh, it, the world is so big, and at the same time, the world is so small. There are a couple of sciences, or at least disciplines, that, that have really started a paradigm shift in what it means to be human. Uh, what psychology really is, much of psychology is still taught in out-of-date, uh, materialistic, physicalistic terms. What we know now is there's inside of us this world that is so incredibly tiny, and yet it is made up of what I, what I think Moses would have called the breath of life. The Chinese would call it the chi, uh, Egyptians the ka, the French the, the uh, elan vital, or perhaps the raison d'etre, life, non-physical life. Well, what are the two sciences, two disciplines, I should really say, that are really telling us today that we are not just flesh and blood and bones, a carbon dub. We're not that. We are much more than that. Our lives, our life, our self is composed really of something that is non-material. Really like the way Carl Jung said this, when a man looks Outside, he dreams, dream of going to the moon, dream of going to Mars, dream of putting multiple telescopes in the far fetches of the universe. We dream. But Jung says when we look inside, we come awake. What we're talking about in this class is the theory of personality. What is personality? Can you quantify it? Can you calculate it? Can you measure it? We're going on this deep dive, and really, this is the first video in which we talk about this question, what is the self? Not just what is the person, but even going beyond that and asking the question, what is the self? What keeps us going? What is our life? 
So we live in these two different worlds, a Newtonian world where we had all a lot of the laws of the universe, gravity, emotion, and object in, in uh, an object in motion, a, a lot of uh, things from um, uh, Newton. Isaac Newton was an incredible person who taught us a lot about this world. By the way, you may not know this, he was also a theologian. He wrote a number of commentaries uh, on the Bible, but his main work, of course, was in the world of physics, physical, physical life. What are the rules of gravity? What are the rules of motion? But then we start coming into the age of Einstein. Einstein didn't start this. He just kind of started putting all of this together with his first and second theories of thermodynamics. And, and then we move on even beyond, uh, beyond him to Hawking, Hawking's. And as we move beyond those disciplines, which really began transferring us into more of a subatomic world, you get the new philosophers asking questions about what is consciousness? Is it physical? Is awareness physical? Is sentience physical? Is consciousness physical? And that's totally against where the psychologists of the late 19th century from Pavlov on began telling us that we're only physical. Many of them say we don't really have free will because free will is not something that can be quantified, weighed, measured, uh, taking the dimensions of free will. How do you how do you do that? But of course, Pavlov, Freud, uh, Watson before him, and many others did not believe in free will. Freud's book. Uh, Beyond Freedom and Dignity, published in the 1970s, began to teach us that we don't really have free will. We are, by nature, determined because of the Newtonian laws of physics. But then came quantum physics, which started moving us toward the idea of free will, that the subatomic particles in their own sense have a sort of free will. And as I mentioned, the philosophers of the mind dealing with the hard problem of consciousness. What is consciousness? And they're beginning to say, well, it's not physical. But back to, back to Skinner and many others, Everything's physical. There's nothing that is non-physical. Then where does that put these this, these new uh, navigators of the new world, the quantum physicists and quantum mechanics and the philosophy of the mind dealing with the hard problem of consciousness? So we we began to ask ourselves these questions. I mean. We've got atoms and neutrons and protons and electrons and bosons and quarks. Actually, I think the quarks are a little bigger than this. And prions and leptons. It just, it just keeps getting smaller. We have not found the smallest thing yet. But those are particles, they're subatomic particles, meaning they're not physical. 
So is there a part of the human that is not physical? And what I'm telling you, as we study personality, if you just study the physical parts of it, the genetic parts of all, many of those things have to do with the physical parts of what it means to be human. But there's definitely a spiritual part at work here. And that's the part that we look at. Do you realize that your body is not the same body as it was when you were born? In fact, if you're 20 years old or older, it's it's probably changed twice. You're probably in the third edition of the physical body you were born with. You don't have a single cell. If, you, if you're over 10 or 12 years old, you don't have a single cell that you were born with. So are you saying you? And if you are the same you, if you contain the same self, how do you do that? Everything's, if everything is physical and yet you don't have one physical part of you, one cell in your body that you were born with, how are you the same person? How are you the same you? And all of that has to do, of course, with, with personality. Who are you doesn't just depend on your physical traits. You don't have a single physical uh, atom in your body, cell in your body, you don't have anything in your body that is in your physical body that is the same as when you were born. But your personality begins to evolve and to change, and you're still you. And I still have some kind of as the Chinese would say, chi. As Star Wars would say, the force. As the French would say, the ka. And as the ancient Hebrews would say, the breath of life in you. In this series of little lectures, that's what we're going to be looking at. Thank you for paying attention to this, and I'll look forward to seeing you in lecture two.